I achieved 96% in my further maths A level. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you what I deem to be the most important tips to help you also succeed in further maths. Now, the first key thing to be successful in any subject is to first and foremost, understand the exam. What this means is familiarizing yourself with the exam format and what the questions are like, so you can best prepare and best perform in the actual exam itself. Now the A-level further maths exam differs slightly from the A-level normal maths exam. And the main difference are that the further maths exams have longer, fewer questions compared to the normal maths exams. For example, let's look at this paper, which is a 2019 core pure one further maths paper from the Edexcel exam board. This paper has a total of eight questions for 75 marks, which is just over about nine marks per question. To give an exact answer, each question has an average marks of nine and three eighths. Luckily, you'd never have to work something like that out in your head in this further maths exam because you have a very good resource, which is your calculator. Which brings me importantly on to my second point, which is learn how to use your calculator. Now in further maths, you have that big chunky calculator, which is quite expensive, but it's also very useful. And essentially this calculator allows you to check absolutely every question that could be thrown at you in a further maths exam. So technically you could do the past papers, not look at the mark scheme, but you'd still be able to know if you got the questions correct because this calculator is so good at checking everything. And if you're not familiar with all the functions of this calculator and all the useful things it can do, the best thing to do is a YouTube video to search up the functions and what this calculator can be used for for further maths. So now we've understood what the exam looks like and the importance of a calculator, let's move on. So the first key actual tip to perform well in further maths A level is to be able to study effectively. And I've broken this broad topic of studying effectively down into three smaller sub points. The first of these being focus on your weaknesses. So there'll be some topics and questions which you really don't need that much practice on and others which you need a lot of practice on. To provide a personal example, I personally didn't need to do much practice on the proof by induction questions, but I did need to do quite a lot of practice in the mechanics questions which were collisions of two particles. And there would have been very little point of me dedicating equal time to these two topics when I was revising for my third maths A-level because a lot of that time I spent dedicated to proof by induction could have been better used if I focused on the collisions of particles. So don't think you need to revise everything equally, that's not how it works. Revise the stuff the most which you are weakest on, and revise the stuff the least which you are strongest on. This way it allows you to effectively bring yourself to a high level of competency across all the topics in further maths. Now the second sub point is learning needs to be active. Now this arguably applies to all subjects, especially problem solving subjects, but it really truly especially applies to further maths. I personally found for further maths, sitting down and just reading a textbook has very limited actual results. Instead, it's really important to be actively engaged in the subject, tackling real questions and real problems. It's very easy to read a textbook and think you understand something. Until you try some questions on that topic, you'll never truly know. And a lot of the time we have the tendency to overpredict how well we truly know something. And the final sub part to this big thing of studying effectively is doing past papers. The way I got the most out of doing past papers was by gamifying the system. So what I did is I had a system where I had every past paper I wanted to do, and once I completed the past paper and marked it, I'd move it to a category of what grade or mark I got in that paper. And that feeling of moving it from uncomplete to complete was quite satisfying and it made the whole process more fun. Okay, now I wanna talk about the most effective and useful resources you have available for you when studying further maths. So let's start off by talking about the textbooks. Now I think the textbooks are actually quite good when you're at that early stage of understanding. And really what you need at this point is a lot of practice and just the basics. And the textbooks I found, especially for LXL, were really good at providing lots of questions about the basic stuff, which really helped with that repetition and truly getting the knowledge into your head. However, I personally found that the effectiveness of the textbooks became more limited when it got to that harder, more challenging topics. And this was mainly because I found the textbook lacked a good number of challenging questions. But this is what brings me to the second resource, which was really useful, which is Maddest Maths. Now, Maddest Maths has the opposite problem. It has a lot of challenging questions. And if you happen to watch my video about the websites I found most useful during my time studying my A-levels, you know all about Maddest Maths. It essentially has a massive bank of unofficial practice papers, which contain a really good number of more difficult questions. And what they've done is they've categorized it by different levels of difficulty. So certain papers are standard difficulty, other papers are a bit harder, and other papers are really hard. And then the final resource you always have available to you, but I feel is sometimes underutilized by a lot of students, are YouTube channels. There are quite a large number of YouTube channels which do a really good job in explaining the topics you'll cover in your further maths course. However, I personally found that you're always better off looking up the specific thing you're tackling at the moment rather than relying on a single channel. For example, if you're struggling on trigonometric differentiation, looking that up as a topic and doing some practice questions that way is probably better than trying to rely on a channel who may not have done a video on that specific topic. And then my final tip for you is seek support when you need it. Further maths is definitely up there amongst the more difficult A-level courses there are, so don't be embarrassed if you feel like you need to reach out to someone when things become confusing or don't make sense. 
From personal experience, teachers are usually very helpful if you reach out to them. What's more, don't be afraid to ask classmates or ex-students if things don't make sense, as they can also be a good source of help. And that wraps this video up. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.